Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome back to the Dream Big Quilt Along. This week we're finishing up the quilt using either the slice or the ditcher rulers to quilt simple straight lines in the background. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to stitch this together. So here are the straight lines that I quilted on my Dream Big panel and I wanted to run these so that they kind of tapered out to the outer edges, meaning that the lines started closer together and then radiated out and were further apart. In this case, it was about a quarter inch apart at the end. To quilt this, I am using the slice ruler. And there was actually one petal in the panel that I picked to use this design with, so that's where I am going to demonstrate this. So I'm just gonna get started lining this up and I'm just looking at that texture that is printed on the panel and I'm just taking a look at that and trying to line my ruler up running parallel to it. So I'm just going to get started stitching and run right along that track. And it's totally up to you if you want to just use that as your base and then just stitch the lines parallel to that and not have them kind of taper slightly, then that's fine. That is probably the easier way of doing it. But let me show you how to bring those lines ever so slightly closer together towards the beginning where we, we got started. Uh, and how you do that is you just simply shift the end of the ruler over ever so slightly. You're lining it up here a quarter inch from the line that you did before, from the line that you just quilted, and then that is lined up so that's a quarter inch away. Back here, it's gonna be ever so slightly closer together. And this isn't rocket science, guys. It's just simply line it up so that the lines come just a little bit closer together. In that case, it didn't work out perfectly, but that's the thing, it's okay. You can also do the taper only when you travel stitch over at that point, because it's just a little bit easier to control. And there we can see I got a really nice taper that time. So it's very, very simple. I do think that the slice ruler is a great choice for this. You could also use the ditcher ruler as we used before. That would be fine too. And I actually just realized why that first line didn't taper properly, because I was actually angling the ruler in the wrong direction. <laughs> So it is obviously early in the morning as I film this. So let's go over that one more time so I get the angle right. That would be good. Here we go. So I travel stitched over and around and now this is going to be a lot easier because the ruler's in my left hand. Left hand means out of the arm of the machine. Everything gets easier when you have your ruler position like that. So here in this case, I'm tapering from narrow at the top, which is the petal from before, and then I'm stitching straight down, and I'm making sure that the end of the ruler down here is lined up right on top of the line that I stitched previously. So I'm gonna get exactly quarter inch spacing down here. That's exactly what I want. And then I can actually angle the ruler properly when stitching back this time and make that proper angle. So here we go. Now this time I know what to do. Instead of pushing the ruler this way, which is across the lines, which would actually push the next line of stitching out that way, instead I'm gonna bring it in so that I can see just a little bit of that line from before. And this is going to ensure that the lines come closer together up to that point. So there we go. So you can see the position of my ruler now. This is correct. If you want the lines to taper nicely, you want the ruler to be positioned so it is ever so slightly inside of the quilting that you've already done. That's the right way to do it. And this is just one of those funny things about ruler quilting. It's a constant experiment as to what designs you can create. It's also a fun experiment just to see what happens when you angle the ruler one way or when you angle the ruler the other way, when you use all, you know, like especially with slice, all these different funky angles that are here printed on the ruler um, that are etched onto the back, you can do all kinds of fun things with them. And this is the thing, guys, don't obsess about it if you make a mistake. You know, I had one set of lines that weren't tapered exactly with everything else. I don't think that's a big deal and no one is going to notice. It is not something that you need to rip out. So I hope throughout this quilt along that you have felt more confidence in your quilting and that you certainly haven't felt the need to go ripping out every little mistake. So as you can see, this is gonna fill in very, very quickly. 
But one thing I really want to get to today, and that is to get back into the center. So I'm actually going to go on ahead and break thread here. I think you guys get the idea of those tapering lines. And we're going to move into the center of the quilt and stitch some different designs, some stippling, some pebbles, some different things in the center area to make that make more sense. So let's take a look here. This was just how I decided to break it up. And at one point I was over here and just kind of playing around and I stitched a little circle in order to get into this area. I filled that in with one of those inner spirals. And I think that a good general design, if you wanted to just fill in everything in this center section with one design, then that internal spiral, that inner spiral design would be a really great choice. It's going to echo these shapes. Each one is going to look organic and fun. And I think that's a great choice. But I want to kind of play around with a couple different designs. The hardest one is probably going to be pebbling. So let's do that one first. I'm going to pull up my thread here on the surface of the quilt, tuck the thread tails under the foot, drop my needle down. And circles pebbling is just, you know, small circle shapes. But in this situation, you want it to be, you know, kind of organic and free form. Not all of them the same size and shape. Some of them can be more oval. Some of them can be much smaller. The one thing to be careful of, if you are making a quilt, then you don't want to get too small, too tiny. If you are making a jacket, of course, you can go a lot smaller and denser you want to, uh, because that's going to add more drama to your jacket. It's also going to make it, uh, you know, slightly stiff, but not in a bad way. Keep in mind, I'm making a jacket. I have flannel in the, as the middle layer, as the batting layer, and flannel doesn't get super stiff even when you quilt it and quilt lots and lots of designs over the surface and, and on a really small scale, I should add too. So here you can see I'm just stacking up these circles nicely together, just swinging around, filling up that space. And it's, a, you know, it's kind of, a, this was a particularly angular space. I had some almost straight lines coming through it. And I think the pebbling is a nice softening effect. You know, it's always going to make any area look a little bit more organic make it just a little softer. And I just really like how that filled that in. But here's the thing about pebbling. It does add a noticeable punch to your quilt. Uh, so, you know, that's gonna be pretty visible from a distance. So I wanna make sure not to just put one little patch of it in one little spot. This is one of those things that you probably picked up on, and especially if you picked up the Dream Big guidebook. You don't use a design, especially an eye-catching design like pebbling, in only one spot. You're going to need to mix it up. So I'm going to just mark a circle on all of the spaces that I plan to use pebbling. I'm just going to go in ahead and draw that in, so that way I have a game plan. Like, okay, all of those little spaces are going to have that in there. And now if you can't see your marks, and this particular area is tricky because it's light, it's blue <laughs> and it doesn't seem to want to mark well. So instead I'm going to grab some masking tape and I'm just going to put a little square of tape here in those spaces where I think a little bit of pebbling would really look good. I think right there, that little spot would be cool. And a little bit of pebbling goes a long way. You don't need to use tons of it in your quilt. Uh, it, you know, it's, it is an accent design, but it is a time consuming design. So the more you put it in your quilt, the longer you're going to be stitching circles. So here we go. I've got that set. And this was, you know, this was kind of an area that I planned to break down just a little bit more. I don't think I want to stitch this whole space with pebbles, maybe just one or two more. So let's just do another kind of half circle shape and then circle shape. And I think I'm done with that now. So the rest of the space, I'm going to stitch with stippling. And I'm going to try and stitch the stippling on about a quarter inch scale. So what I'm going to do is just get in here and just start wiggling. And when you're stitching on a quarter inch scale and you've got a ruler foot on your machine, that's actually pretty convenient because you can just use the edges of the foot as a guide. And I've done lots of videos on stippling and on pebbling specifically. So if that's not enough of a description for you and seeing how I'm stitching that in there, please go watch those other videos. I will make sure to link all of them up so you can see them. Okay, so now I have a game plan for stippling. I kind of like that. And let's see here, maybe I can put, maybe I can put an X here in the ones where I think stippling would look good. 
maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. I also want to mix it up, maybe add some lines into, um, into some of these spaces too. I think some, some just curving lines coming in and out, maybe just echoing some of these shapes would look good. So let's try that next. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to swing down, kind of maybe make that a point and then stitch back and echo that. I think that looks really good. Travel stitch along the edge and stitch back down. You can see how I'm tapering this as well. I'm just quilting those wiggly lines freehand and I'm bringing them together to a point at one end and then they're about a quarter inch apart here at the top. So I think that looks really good. There we go. And what we're doing here, my, my goal is simply to add different textures. I, you know, I, I think the more interesting the center is, then the less weird it's gonna look. It is a very, you know, it's a strange space. It's the center of a flower. Centers of flowers are a little bit weird looking and figuring out a way of creatively quilting that, that's the challenge. Okay, I plan to put stippling there. So stitch down to the bottom. And then now I'm gonna stitch some simple wiggly lines. And the rule for stippling is just to stitch a wiggly line that doesn't cross itself. I'm just gonna be wiggling forward and back, kind of, I fill in rows, so that way I don't stitch myself into a corner. But even if you do stitch yourself into a corner, just travel stitch along the edge and you'll be able to get back and continue your design. There we go, that looks good. Okay, this little spot I think could be filled. Oops, I'm, I'm getting a hold of my masking tape. I can put that back in place. I think in this case, I wanna go back to one of those inner spirals. I'll show you how to stitch one of those. That will involve a thread break. I will get all the way to the center of this and then break thread. That's not a big deal. You know, I don't, it, it just takes a little minute to tie that off and bury it. It's we're really not a big deal to have to do that, but it's one of those things that kind of have to think about whenever you're stitching into it. Be like, all right, I know that that's gonna be a stop. I'm gonna have to stop, break the thread tails, tie off and bury, and get started again. So usually whenever I think of a design, you know, a space where I wanna put a, an inner spiral like that, I might wait for the end to do that one simply so that way it doesn't break my flow. I find that any time that I'm quilting and uh, I break thread or maybe I run out of bobbin thread or something like that and I have to go wind bobbins uh, or you know my whole spool runs out or something like that that represents a stop and then I'll often end up getting distracted I might go get a snack you know and it might be a while before I get back to quilting so I try and minimize stops like that and that helps me stay on track and not get distracted as I'm stitching these different designs. So that is pretty much it for the different designs I'm planning to use in this area. I'm going to fill in with pebbling in these areas I've marked with my blue tape. I'm going to do some stippling. I'm going to do some inner spirals and then just some simple curving lines, just like I've shown you here. It's not rocket science and it doesn't matter if it's perfect, if yours matches mine exactly. It's just a matter of going, okay, what do I feel like stitching and filling that into that area. And here's what it looked like whenever I finished quilting the center of my dream big panel. So that's it for this video. I hope you're excited about giving this design a try. If you'd like to know exactly where I stitched this design on the dream big quilt, come and check out the dream big guidebook available at leahday.com slash dream guide. I share step-by-step -step diagrams for which designs I stitch in which areas on the quilt as well as extra helpful tips and tricks for getting started and more instructions on what I'm doing with my dream big quilts. I'm gonna be cutting these up and turning them into a quilted jacket. So if you'd like extra information, some tips and tricks and behind the scenes information, come and check out that guidebook at leahday.com slash dream guide. Until next time, let's go quilt.